Welcome to the Women's Hockey Life podcast, empowering women and girls in hockey. We'll be talking in depth about what it really takes to be unstoppable on the ice and in life. We'll be looking at the mindset of the most successful women as they mastered the game and went on to even bigger successes in life because they mastered it. This podcast is brought to you by our friends over at the Hockey News. Go to THN.com backslash deal to subscribe to their magazine today. Today, I'm honored, privileged, and grateful to welcome Brianna Decker to our show. She's a current member of the U.S. national team, world champion, two-time Olympian, Patty Kazmaier Award winner, PWHAP member, and you may also remember her from the NHL All-Star Skills Competition back in 2019. I could literally spend all day listing her accomplishments and her accolades, but let's dive into the show. Brianna, thank you for being here with us today. Thanks for having me. You know what's funny, actually? <laughs> I don't even know if I said your name correctly. Like, I've known you for, what, four or five years now? And I just, I just welcomed you. And call I'm like, me Dex. Just call me Dex. That's just it, though. Like, you've literally held my twins. They've been in your arms. You've been, <laughs> you've been to my house. And I'm like, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing your first name right. Is it Brianna or Brianna? Well, it depends where you're from. So if you're East Coast in the, in the U.S., it's Brianna. And if you're in the Midwest, where I'm from, it's Brianna. Yeah, so okay. it's, I go by both. I'll respond to both. Well, it's funny because I only know you as Dex. You're just Dex to me. So I don't, I don't know that I've ever actually said your first name that, that too many times. Yeah. Okay, well, don't feel bad about it because like Megan Duggan and Casey Bellamy, both their parents uh, call me Brianna and I've known them for over 10 years. So oh, that's um, amazing. Yeah, so they both they both call me Brianna, so and it's like the big thick Boston accent. So, <laughs> so you have many names, and I take it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love it. I love it. Well, it's funny though, because in the hockey world, like how many of your teammates do you actually call by their first name? Yeah, like no one. Yeah, like right? that's why I'm gonna refer to you as Hawk probably on this instead of <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Jacqueline, like, Who's so. Hawk. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. Just in case you don't know. <laughs> but it's funny though. I think of my my teammates too, or people I've coached. I'm like, yeah, Aaron Burns. That was Burnsy. The alum, it was Lummer. Like there, you know what I mean? Like there's no, yeah. no one really goes by their first name, but uh, how have you been holding up during this pandemic? How are you doing? Um, I'm doing pretty well. Obviously some adjustments um, as far as the training has gone. Um, you know, obviously gyms and rinks weren't open at one point throughout the summer. And so um, I had to make do with what I had at my house. Um, got some dumbbells, bought a really cheap spin bike, but it's been holding up. I kind of bought this thin bike as if it would have been all my clay. If this lasts me three months, like I'm good. Yeah. And it's been, it's lasted me about six months now. So I'm, mm -hmm. um, I've been, yeah, I've been pleased with it, but it's, yeah, it's been a big transition. I think now getting back on the ice has been really, really nice. I think just being able to work on things off ice throughout the summer, um, whether it's my shot or different things. Um, it's been great to be able to finally see that transition um, onto the skills and onto the ice. So that's, that's kind of a unique thing is, is you've got obviously gotten resourceful, got the spin bike and, and working on your stick handling and shooting. Has that kind of been a blessing in disguise to have more time than maybe usual to really focus on the, the nitty gritty details of your game? Yeah, I think so. I think um, I, I said, at the, you know, at some point during this pandemic that like time, we have time, we have time to work on things and people, you know, have been kind of frustrated with, you know, not being able to get on the ice and stuff like that. But I was like, hey, this is an opportunity for me to work on little details of my game that I might not be able to, you know, you go out and have skills practices, whether you're with six people or, you know, you're out with your team, you don't have time to, you don't have an hour to work on your shot. Like, so this, this pandemic has been nice, just from an off ice standpoint, being able to take an hour to um, and mainly focus on my shot for, you know, two, two times a week for an hour. So I, yeah, it's been a blessing in disguise in some ways. Has it been frustrating in others? Definitely. But, um, there's always a plus side to things. And that's what I love about you is you, you tend to see the, the plus side, the positive side of most things, but, but talk to me about those negatives. Like what, what has been the most frustrating? Is it the lack of ice? Is it not seeing your teammates or is it something more internal? Like what, what's been the frustrating part for you? I think frustrating part is, you know, I, we, Worlds got canceled, so that was tough. Um, I came back from an injury. I was injured uh, uh, last October, so October 2019. Um, finally got back in January, trained to get back, played in a series against Canada in February, and then Worlds was canceled. So um, trying to get back um, from that injury was really difficult, but then going into COVID, the, the hard part is, okay, then we like, we now we don't have Worlds, but now we're going to have – August camp as a check-in with everybody and see everybody and 
um, you know, at the end of July got canceled. And so I think the frustrating part is, you know, having your hopes up that you're going to be able to see your teammates, see your coaches, work on things as a group um, together in person. Um, and those things keep getting canceled. So that's been a frustration. Um, one other one would probably be motivation. Um, Casey Bellamy and I actually just talked about this the other day. She gave me a call. She was like, uh, you know, Dax, I just had a really rough morning. I just was really unmotivated. And I was like, Case, like, I hear you. Like, there's days where I wake up where I'm like, all right, let's do it. Here we go. We're going to, I'm going to, you know, kick some ass on the bike and be, you know, be ready to go in the weight room. And then there's days where I wake up and I'm like, man, like, I don't have things till, you know, November, December now. Like, what's the, yeah. you know, almost like, what's the point, which is a really, you know, that can slip through my mind. Um, so that motivation does get hard. Um, but I have to just realize that, like, just keep that mindset of time is, um, you know, you have time to work on things and my teammates are there wherever they are, whether they can work out at a gym, whether they're at their home working out, they're doing their thing. So holding myself accountable as much as possible um, and just trying to keep up with that motivation piece. So that's, that's an interesting point, the motivation, because there's like, obviously bells yourself, like you're all elite athletes, you're professional athletes, you're Olympians, but you have days where you're just like, I, not that you don't want to do it, but you are lacking that motivation. So is it, is it doing what bells did with you? Like just picking up the phone, checking in, maybe getting a little kick in the butt from you so that she can get going. Like we've all had those days. I've, I remember having those days in college and even, you know, playing with the Boston blades and stuff like that. But like, you've got to find that intrinsic motivation, but what is it for you or, or your teammates that works, works well? Yeah, I think for one, like I, it almost happened to me this morning. I was like, I don't want to do my bike. Like I don't want to do it. And I just, once I got on it, I was like in the zone. And I think that's one thing with a lot of us elite athletes is that, yeah, you might have that doubt, but we don't, we don't skip out on anything. We're not going to not do it. So once we're in it though, we're like in it. And like, I'm so dialed in when I'm doing the bike sprints or doing the, when I'm in the weight room lifting. Um, so that's one thing, but yeah, I think simple as like picking up the phone and telling you're talking to your teammate about it. Cause we're all, we're all in the same boat and it doesn't matter what level you're at right now during this pandemic. Like everyone's in the same boat as far as frustrated, unmotivated at times. Um, and so everyone's going to be able to relate. So I, you know, Casey had called me and told me about that. And then I gave her a call a few days later to check in to see how she was doing because I'm like, Hey, Casey, I'm going through the same things and it's, it's tough, but um, it's just nice feeling that you're not alone when you're in that situation too. Absolutely. No, that, that makes sense. And you alluded to just, you know, coming back from the injury and then obviously pandemic hit say, here's another obstacle to overcome. So you've had your fair share between 2019 and 2020 of, of things, of challenges, right? Obstacles that get in your way and you got to overcome them. Have you had a big injury like that before? No, um, I, I've had injuries where I've been able to like play through them or, uh, the, my big, my biggest one was my college in college. I broke my elbow my freshman year, second game of the of my career in college so college career so uh, I was out for six weeks um and it was that was tough like new team new atmosphere new school um and it broke my elbow but my teammates were great like there was the the thing that was a, such a blessing was there was eight freshmen so like we're we we're all like we we're all pretty young and then there was one transfer so there was really technically like nine new girls to the team and so I didn't feel like I you know, everyone was always checking in on me and I didn't feel like I couldn't reach out to those guys because those guys were all in the same boat too as me coming to new school and the team. Um, but besides that injury, no, I had, um, knock on wood, pretty thankful for things um, safety-wise and injury-wise. But then, yeah, this uh, last, so it was last uh, 2019 in July, I actually had got hurt. I tried to rehab back from it um, at sports hernia, double sports hernia and double groin surgery um, in October. So, Wow. Quite, uh, quite the injury for a hockey player. Um, but I'm, you know, they fixed me up and it took a while. I was supposed to be back six. This is another thing that was kind of tough. Like I was supposed to be back six to eight weeks after surgery. And yeah. it took me about, it took me about 12 weeks. So, wow. um, yeah. And I mean, everything, everything varies a little bit. Um, you know, some people come back faster. Some people it takes longer. I think I just had so much done. Um, it was just tough to be able to come back that fast. And um, I feel pretty much back to normal now, but things, you know, obviously the pandemic, then I'm not skating again. I'm not working those muscles that you need to. So um, kind of just taking it easy, getting back into the season now. Absolutely. That's, that's a double whammy. Like that's, that's a lot, that's a lot to endure. Yeah. And, 
if and you obviously you said you broke your elbow, you've had maybe some other minor injuries, but did, did you find yourself feeling isolated? And, and I guess partially because of the pandemic and just not being able to be with the team and, you know, living away from people. Like, did you have, I mean, let's be honest, when anyone goes through an injury, if anyone's listening who's had an injury, there's moments where you go pretty dark. Am I going to be able to bounce back? can I do this? This, this, this sucks. This is unfair. You kind of take that victim mentality for a second, but then, you know, you got to bounce back and snap out of it. But did you ever encounter those moments? And if so, like, how did you bounce out of them? How did you bounce back? Yeah, definitely. And I, I talked about this at one point, um, at, within the last few months, someone asked me the same question about injury and like, have I, did I have those moments? And I'm like, absolutely. Like, especially, so this is how injury works in my book. Like someone gets injured. Everyone's like, Oh my God, can I do anything? Can I get you anything? What can I do? Let me know if you need anything. And of course, like that's how it is for the first week, week and a half, two weeks. And then it's like, Oh yeah. That, oh, Dax is injured. Oh, Oh, that person's injured. No one, you know, no one checks in continuously. I'm like, well, did I heal in two weeks or what? Like, no, like I still needed like, and it's like, thankfully with my injury I was able to walk out of the hospital that day so I was able to walk and function like that um I mean what was I walking like at my you know my grandma who's like 90s face <laughs> yes but like <laughs> I was uh I was at least able to walk but um you know I think it's just mentally is what people don't realize you got to check in with those people who are injured I think and like I will do that more so now with people who are injured now that I've been through it. And like, that's sad that that's what it took for me to realize how much, you know, someone who's injured needs that support, but um, you know, it's a learning experience, but like with the first, the first month was really tough for me. Like I had those doubts of why, why am I not, why am I healing fast enough? They said six to eight weeks, like I should be ready to go and be ready on the ice soon. I don't even feel like I can put on skates and stride right now. Um, you know, like, am I going to be good to go for December camp? So I got, as like I said, I had my surgery in October. I was trying to get back for our December camp. Um, we had two games against Canada that you could possibly make. And I went to camp thinking, you know, I'm like, I'm going to be okay. And I skated once and I was like, not there yet. Like, I just knew I wasn't there. Yeah, I just didn't feel, I didn't feel back to myself enough. Um, uh, and then, yeah, once I got a good chunk of time um, between basically around Christmas and New Year's, and I came back in January, I think around January 9th, I ended up playing. Um, so I just needed a little bit more time, um, but it's just reading your body, knowing what you're going through. Um, but I think from a mental standpoint, you have to go back and it took me a while to learn this, but I had to go back to, I bring more to the table than just like my on ice ability to my team. Um, and you know, what could I focus on that I could control at that moment? And I went, I can focus on my nutrition. I can focus on my sleep. I can do like my hundred percent that I can do in the weight room. So if I'm going to do rehab, like that's all I can do for the day. Okay. Well then I'm going to do a hundred percent at that. And like, that was the mindset I had. And I set goals for myself on a weekly basis of like, this is what I want to be able to do by the end of the week. Um, and those are things that helped me get through injury. And it wasn't, I was no longer looking at a six to eight week span. I was looking at a like a weekly span yep. and it just helped me gain a little bit more confidence throughout my re rehab. Yeah. Well, like you said, there's the, the physical rehabilitation, but there's also the mental, the mental re yeah. rehabilitation from all of that. It's, I remember even coaching some players that, you know, would have ACL tears and they're out for like either the season or like other injuries, maybe it was a couple months and the emotional toll that they went through and they're younger kids too, right? They're in university, but they became such better teammates and leaders their later years because they had been through it. So when they had teammates now injured, like they were the first to check in to text them, to call them. And it's like you said, it's a life experience. Now, you know, if you have an injured teammate, you're going to help, you're going to be there emotionally, not just after the first week when everyone's <laughs> checking in on you. Right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's, oh, it's not a fun thing to go through, but it sounds like you're bouncing back and, and you're ready to take the ice whenever we're allowed to. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I feel a lot better now and just focus, like I said, and focus on that mindset piece and it really helped me through. No, absolutely. Absolutely. So I want to, I want to ask you about your coaching career, right? So you've been with the, the U18 national team. You won gold at the, what was it? 2019 world championships in Japan. Um, and, and I know you've coached at several district camps prior to that, but has your perspective of the game changed, changed since you've become a coach? Like, do you see the game differently from behind the bench versus being out there on the ice? Yeah, definitely. And the one thing I respect now that I've been coaching is that, like, 
players when you're in the game like you think you see things so well and you think you see the right plays and like you make it you make a bad play like you might know it but you still like oh I probably was still fine and as a coach you're like no like that was not the right play like it just it's, it's so it's funny the what different are you doing perspectives. <laughs> yeah it's funny the different perspectives um I I've learned a lot from coaching though just um you know I had a question someone asked me a question about like uh, is it different winning as a coach than it is a player? Um, and I think as a player, you're just, there's so much adrenaline when you win and you're just so amped up and just so like freaking, I don't know, pumped. And like, you put yep. so much work in and like you, you put the work in your teammates, put the work in, you saw your teammates. And then as a coach, I was like, so proud of like the girls. I think I was just like, so proud of everything. You know, like you don't see it as a coach, you're like, you see the practice and you see games. Like you don't see a lot of times the underneath work that they all do. Um, and so that's why it's a different perspective, I think, from coaching to playing. Yeah. I, I remember when I became a coach and like standing behind the bench the first time and being like, wow, I see the game completely different. Like I almost wish I had the experience that you're having where you're still playing and you got to coach because you see it so differently, like so yeah. differently. And I just always remember feeling like, obviously, physically, you're exhausted when you're a player at the end of a game, right? You've given it your all, you're tired. But I remember being a coach and, like, finishing a game and being like, I need a nap. Like, that was exhausting. Like, <laughs> oh, emotionally, yeah. it was just like, holy, because, you know, you're matching lines. You're, you're just trying to, like, yeah. pull up and, like, okay, we got to mix up lines, penalty kill, power play, whatever it may be. And then at the end of the game, I'm like, I need a nap. <laughs> yeah. I think, like, as a coach, too, like, you can see a goal or a goal against or goal for happening two plays before. And as a player, like you're in the moment, like you're, you're realizing, oh, that person's open. This person's open. Like, yeah. um, and you know, you, you can maybe anticipate a good play happening, but like as a coach, like you can just see that stuff happening. You're like, oh no, oh no, 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 no. Or like, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, um, sure. yeah it's super rich. And the, the, a fun fact of that, I, that I've realized is like, you eat more. I eat more as a coach. Like I snack. Unbelievable. Oh, oh, there's, oh, there's, there's Tootsie Rolls. Oh, I'll have one of those. Like, oh, there's Pringles. Oh, okay. I'll have some of those. <laughs> like as a player, I don't eat for two, two hours and I'm burning like five times the amount of calories. Isn't it hilarious? And the amount of gum that you chew as a coach, like it's like, oh. like what was that? The bubble, bubblicious hubba bubba, whatever the bazooka yeah. gum. Like, we, we probably kept them in stock. Like kept them in business during my coaching career. It was always <laughs> yeah. on the bench. And I'm like, my jaw would kill because you'd just be chomping oh. on it. And you watch oh, yeah. NHL games or just international games, whatever. You always see coaches chewing gum. And maybe it's like a stress reliever for us or something. But <laughs> I'll never, yeah. Yeah. like more, more crawl, right? Like she uh, was yes. my head coach for U18. So she's like, I'll never forget. It was my first, it was my first series coaching. Um, we were up in Calgary actually. And she was like, all right, Dex, like, maybe no gum, like mints, because like you're on TV, Ooh. it's like, <laughs> it said like mints is just like, you know, it's just like, you just suck on them, in there. <laughs> yeah, exactly, well, then you start chewing on them when it comes to a high intense situation, <laughs> moment, like, yeah, it's funny, because yeah. I moved recently, and I brought all my coaching jackets, and I went through the pockets, and I actually found those white mints, and the, I can't, I'm forgetting the name, it's the, the yellow wrapper with it's the pink gum. It's like the worst for you, but I found a bunch of those in the pockets. I'm like, this is, this is old, <laughs> but oh, it's, I'm glad, I'm glad we all think the same and do the same things. But uh, so oh, yeah. getting back to that though, do you think um, like being a coach has made you a better player? Absolutely. Um, I just, I feel like I said, I think I view the game differently. I think, um, but one other thing is I've learned a lot more patience. I've learned, um, you know, you have to coach kids differently. So how does that transition to a player? Well, not every player is going to, you know, react to, your, you know, your words the same way. Some players can take, you know, more direct comments. Some players can't take some of that direct, um, direct comments. And so I realized that as a teammate, I think I'm going to be a better teammate just recognizing that people respond differently. But I learned that through coaching. I think, um, you know, telling this kid, hey, you might need to get your head out of your butt. <laughs> and this kid, like, hey, like, good job there. You just, you know, try to keep your feet moving there. So it's just a different approach on things. Um, but I, it's definitely made me a better player for sure. That's one thing I wish every player could experience. And I don't know, actually, I'd be fascinated. To, there are ways to teach it, I guess, but, you know, the player's got to be willing to learn it. But it is learning how to be that good coach slash teammate of, hey, this person can handle my constructive criticism. I can tell them how it is straight up and they can take it and not, not hold it against me. 
right? They're not going to be yeah. angry at me. Or, but then there's others that you got to kind of subtly or softly tell them, like you got to compliment them first and then say, hey, why don't you try this? Yeah. But if, if everyone knew how to communicate with one another, one another based on their learning style, like think about how much successful, more successful a team could be. And Absolutely. I think that's, that's on the coach, right? To learn how to coach those different styles. And that's what I feel like you're saying is you, you've learned how to do that. And that's what's making you a better player, teammate, coach. Yeah, definitely. And I think there's just, yeah, like, like I said, patience is huge. Like some kids get it right away. Some kids don't. But yeah. fortunately enough, I've been obviously coaching the, U, the U18 team. So like those guys get things pretty quickly. Like they're the best of their age group. So um, I've been kind of handed at least a good group of kids. So <laughs> want to go try a, a U8 or U10 team? See how it goes? <laughs> yeah, it might be a little tough. Yeah. <laughs> A little bit hey, different. Now that's patience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're the real heroes in this. Let's be honest. Yeah, exactly. Right? Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. So like, to me, like we've worked together with the WHL Academy. You're one of our mindset coaches. You help out the players we work with. So I, I know you and I know you well, but like do you, when you think back, like your mindset to me is, is unbelievable. Even through adversity, through, through injury, you still always see the glass half full. You still always see the positive in anything. Can you remember a time in your life where you kind of hit that tipping point of, okay, I either got to see it this way or I'm not going to be successful. I'm not going to accomplish these dreams and goals that I have. Like, was there somebody yeah, I mean, experience? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, after we lost the 2014 Olympics, that was like a big, I mean, I'm, I'm sure Hawk, I'm, heard, I'm sure you've heard me talk about this a little bit, but like it, it was an eye opener. It was a, Hey, Canada is going to be just as strong. They're going to be just as fast. They're going to be able to shoot the puck. They're going to be able to be just as skilled. Um, you know, the difference is the mindset. The difference is that mental part of the game. And like, I, I realized that like, I need to start really focusing in on that stuff. And so losing a gold medal is what it took for me to be like, holy crap, like I need to be, which is crazy, but like, that's what it took. And I'm like, you look at Kobe Bryant, you look at Tiger Woods, you look at like these unbelievable, incredible athletes. They have such a mental part of their game. Like Abby Wambach, Serena Williams, like they've all gone through that training, you know, have some of them maybe taken it more serious than others. Yeah. But I'm like, those oh, they're the best of the best athletes. And if they're doing it, like, why wouldn't I be doing it? Why do, why would I not need it then? And um, so those are some of, like, it wasn't a tough, I mean, yes, losing a gold medal was the tough, ex um, experience, but it's not like I had to go through this huge thing where I'm like, all right, now like mindset, like my, that's what developed my mindset to what it is now. I think it was, you know, obviously losing a gold medal was a huge thing. Um, and it just, it's tough that that, that had to happen, but. But it's ultimately what led you on the path and then look at 2018. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. Um, you know, we had all the right tools in place going into 2014. Uh, we had all the right mindset tools as far as like, this is what you should do. This is how you can do it. You need to be focused on this, like don't have distractions, um, you know, all different ways to figure out how you can navigate through that. Um, I just like, you know, I didn't take it serious enough. And then after we lost, I was like, all right, let's do it. Let's take this serious. I take my physical training serious. Like I need to start taking my mental um, training serious. And so that's, um, those are things that I did. And in, 2000, in 2018, we had um, our 2018 coach, he had, um, you know, made us watch this movie called The Secret. And I like, I don't know if people have seen it or, you know, it's kind of, it's in, and I'll be honest, like fans who are listening or people who are listening, like, it is like, it might be like, you're gonna watch it and you're like, oh man, this is kind of boring, but just, it, just give it a chance. And it's like, it's, it's so intriguing to me. You know what, Dex? If people are going to be listening to this podcast in the future, they're going to have to get used to that woo-woo out there stuff because I'm a firm believer in the secret and the universe and everything out there. Because if you just listen to the message without, you know, judging first, just take a second, right? Yeah. And I think right there, like, Hawk, like, you just nailed it. Like, that is what I stopped doing after 2014. I stopped judging things. I was so open-minded because I was like, I have nothing to lose at this point like I want nothing but an Olympic gold medal and I'm like I need to just be open to everything and so yeah like our coach in 2018 had us watch this movie Casey and I Casey Dolly and I sitting on our couches in Florida watching this movie and we were like so into it writing stuff down and um you know it talks about a vision board and you you know making yourself a vision board and you know companies do this and they make, like realize a big change for them and so Casey and I went and printed out pictures made our own vision board um, and those were things like little details of the mental game 
helped me wrap my head more around the mental game. If that made sense. Like I just bought into everything. Yep. Um, you know, and it comes down to little details and that is what my game is focused on now, whether it's mental or physical, it's all about those small details. Absolutely. And that's, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that helped you through your injuries and just, you know, taking silver and Sochi and, you know, you, you've got to now be open-minded to other ways that you can master the game. Right. Yeah. And that's internally, it starts there. And then, you know, I'm sure you're, you're on ice and your skills and everything else improved once you just adopted that new mentality. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Like everything started to shift. Um, and you know, like good, I think good things come your way when you're thinking positive and you're giving to others, you're thinking joy, you're thinking happiness. Um, I think those are, you know, are you going to hit hiccups? Yes. But like though you're going to get through it because you always have that mindset. Absolutely. It's the universe testing you. Do you really want this? How bad do you want it? Right. You're laughing because yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah, <exactly>. everyone <laughs> else listening is like, these two are cuckoo. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not listening to that one again. <laughs> right. Right. Hey, she's a, she's a gold medalist guys. Like listen to her. <laughs> I don't have the gold medal, but uh, you know, I got twins. I'm surviving that. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> That's awesome. So I, I want to talk a little just about the Olympics. Like I, obviously you guys, you go through this like grueling training process. You get there. It's, you're dialed in, you're focused, you get to the gold medal, you take silver, you take gold. What's it like afterwards? Like, are you guys just so tired that you, you, obviously you're excited, but you get, when the doors close and you're in the locker room, are you guys exhausted? Are you just partying? Are you happy? Like, what's it really like? Well, it's two different perspectives. So 2014. (laughs) True. Like 2014, you still have um, you know, a drink in hand, but you're sobbing, you're sitting there. Drinking for other reasons. reasons. Got it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Drinking for other reasons. Um, we still, we still partied a lot after 2014. Um, but like I said, drinking for other reasons, it was, it was so sad. Um, so devastating. So our locker room was pretty, it was pretty quiet. Like yeah. it was pretty emotional. Um, after 18, our, our locker room was nuts. Like everyone was, yeah. I mean, we were celebrating like you, you, you know, you fans, you watch those celebrations, like in the locker room of, um, MLB, right? Like the baseball guys, like, yeah, we didn't have goggles and stuff, but like, that's what it was like. It's just like, it's so much fun. And, um, I remember, so my mom and my younger brother didn't make it to, um, to Pyeongchang, like they didn't uh, come. So my brother was still playing hockey. So I FaceTimed my mom, which it was like, I don't remember what time it was back home, but I FaceTimed my mom. Cause I was like, you know what? Like I, sh- I don't want to be on my phone really, but I'm like, I need to share this with my mom cause she couldn't be there. So um, it was, it was awesome. I FaceTimed her for like maybe two minutes, but she was like, all right, go on fun. Like, uh-huh. whatever. So um, yeah, that was, it was, uh, pretty incredible, but I actually got drug test called for drug testing in 2018. So we were like, Ooh, like having fun. And then like, I had to get pulled into drug testing, which is like, it took a little bit of it took Wait, time. Like, were there? 20. Yeah. So like, they like, they take random people right after games. And of course, I'm like, I get pulled, pulled in right after that, yeah, after we won. So like, I had like a sip of beer and then I couldn't like obviously have one for like 20 minutes or so. Cause I had to get, I had to like, you know, it was urine and blood, te- like blood. So I oh, had to wow. get both taken. Yeah. So like, and I'm like in this little, in this little waiting room behind me is Marie Philippe Lynn. And then in, um, and she had, if ever, for those who don't remember watching the game, she hit me in like the third period, like <laughs> bad, like cut my head off. And she's like, she asked me when we were at drug, in the drug testing, and I'm like, oh, Dex, like, are you okay? And I was like, I was like, at that point, I was like, yeah, I'm fine. Like, look, I, got a, I have a gold medal around my neck. <laughs> like, I, I did not say How that. How are you? I, yeah. I, I would, yeah, I treated her, obviously, with respect. But, of course. Um, yeah, so, like, yeah, you're sitting there with, like, some of the opponents. Like, they take two to three girls from each team, and yeah. or it's random sometimes. So, um, yeah, drug testing. And then I got back to, the, back to our whole, like, celebration in the locker room after that. That's, I did not know that. Yeah. I didn't know they did it right after the game. That would kind of be a buzzkill, but you know. Oh yeah, like you're like you literally you get off the ice and there's people waiting there for you, and they know exactly which number you are, and then yeah, so it's like they they follow you into the locker room. They have to watch you change and all that stuff. Watch you change, yeah. Go to the washroom. Yeah, the blood all test. that stuff. Yeah, everything. 
that's so funny because you're literally bringing me back to my college days and they would do random drug testing too, the NCAA, right? And oh, I yeah. only got drug tested once, but it was like kind of invasive and like, this is like, I'm, I'm a little bit shy. Like, <laughs> I don't know well, that yeah. I what you need right now. <laughs> but I'm like, this is the last thing I want to do literally. after winning. Like, yeah. yeah, like either way, winning or losing, it's the last thing you yeah. want to do. Like, yeah. um, so I think one of the, I think it was Duggan or Carpenter or something said she got pulled for both games, both, uh, or I'm mm-hmm. oh, sorry, just she, she got pulled for like two back-to-back world championship games or something like that. I'm like, Jesus, like, she goes, of course, it's me, like. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Oh, wow. So, yeah, that's literally not, I was not expecting that. Okay. And then, yeah. but then you guys went on this, like, tour afterwards, and you had all these cool experiences. Like, what was that like? Yeah, uh, that was incredible. Like, we had that set up, um, and we. Wait, did you have that set up, win or lose? No. Okay. Some, um, we, I think we requested a tour, yes, win or lose, sorry, but I think it was um, or unless if we won, I can't, honestly, I can't remember Hawk, like, I don't so remember good, how so they had set up, but we, I know we did have to change our flights, mm. um, we were supposed to fly back to Florida originally after, where we centralized, um, after we won, um, and they changed our flights to California, because we went on um, Ellen, and I was gonna say to that the, was the Ellen show, <laughs> yeah, and I went to the Kings game and stuff, so that was, like, between the Kings game and Ellen, like, that was the Kings game was incredible. Like they, the LA Kings hosted us. We had like a full course meal. Like it was, uh, that it comes then, back to food. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. Full course meal. So basically a guy who used to work for USA hockey, he uh, was a PR guy at, uh, he's a PR guy at the Kings now. So oh. he, it was a good like hook up with him and good to see him. And he was so pumped for us because he had worked with us all the way up to a year before 2018 oh. Olympics. So it was kind of like, he had to make a job change, but um yeah came full circle that's so. amazing and you guys just toured the country after that eh yeah um yeah it was incredible we went to um an outdoor game the washington capitals played oh gosh i can't remember who they played that's so bad um but we just yeah, we went to different, a lot of different things um we got to see Serena Williams and Venus Williams we got to meet them and watch them on court side at one of their like events that they um, do with other uh, female tennis players that they basically raise money um, for a charity or something like that. And it was just like, it was great to be able to meet all those athletes as well. Um, but no matter where we, where we were, like we were like, we were treated very, very we're well. Celebrities. And it was like awesome. Yeah, we were for like 10 days. It was awesome. <laughs> hey, you know what? Live it up. It's first time in 20 years. Like it's, it's, you brought the gold home and you deserve yeah. I think like it's crazy like that is like we needed to win to help grow our game in the U.S. Um, it's it's crazy that I take that because like we do just as much work, we train just as hard, and like it all depends what medal we bring home for you know to help grow our game because like in 2014 like we worked just as hard. Like we from a mental side, no, we didn't. We worked harder, obviously, on the mental side going into 2018. But like physically, like you work just as hard, you grind just as hard. Um, it's just a difference of the color of metal like that's what you're gonna get isn't it amazing to think that this game has given you all these experiences yeah like people like ask me so many times like where my favorite place to travel is and like um where I've been and I I've been to so many different countries been to so many different cultures met so many different people from different countries and um I'm definitely so thankful for that like I don't need to go on vacation like I've been to different um, different places so. your whole life has been a vacation Dex come on <laughs> really it is I'm pretty, I'm pretty you know and my, my parents thank me so much because they've gotten to come to a lot of different places Good um, been able to travel to Swit- yeah you've been able to travel to Switzerland St. John's um obviously Sochi and uh Pyeongchang so like they're so thankful to be able because they're like why would we go to this place? Why would we have gone to this place? True. And um, so I think in the moment when I'm at these places and my family's out doing tours, things and seeing everything, I'm like, oh yeah, hotel rink, hotel rink. But, what do you remember from uh, Sochi? Uh, the hotel on the rink. Your parents, they the remember rink. the whole city. <laughs> yeah, they remember. Exactly, exactly. So that's the only thing. I'm sometimes bitter about that because I'm like, I want to kind of go back to some of these places and actually experience them and like, and everything but you will 
yeah you at some point yeah you absolutely well you're gonna go back and be able to remember and it'll be this nostal- nostalgic experience for you like yeah remember when absolutely and like i think when I, now that I, i've been lucky since i've been coaching uh u18 i've been lucky enough to be able to go to these mm-hmm. places and actually experience them a little bit more like um when we were in uh japan and then when we were in um Bratislava, it's just like it's different places it's great yeah that's true it's different different prep for a coach at those events than uh than players yeah you just got you know you got to get your sleep but not your physical most, most proper sleep yeah. <laughs> Noted. Got it. We'll, we'll end it there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I have one big question for you to kind of wrap up here. Um, and that's basically like, if you could go back to when you were a little girl, little Dex and tell yourself one thing, what would that be? Uh, um, it's only, only one thing, huh? Huh? You know what? I say one thing, but if it takes you to two or three, that's fine. You can tell yeah. you can tell a little bit. Yeah, because because I think at the end of the day, it's like just always like you're in love with the game for a reason, and like make sure you never lose sight of that. Um, but so that that's my that's kind of been a lot of my, one of my biggest answers all the time. Um, you love the game, and don't lose sight of that. And if you do, just try to find your reasons why you do love it. Um, but Another thing would be like, thank your parents. Like I, I can't thank my parents enough now. Um, they, they do so much. For me. Like I wouldn't even be where I'm at. Like I wouldn't have gone to Shattuck. I wouldn't have then gotten a scholarship to Wisconsin and I wouldn't have had opportunities to play on the U.S. team. Um, I just, I just thank them for their support and stuff. And like, that's what I want to, that's what I would tell like young kids and myself when I was younger is like, just be thankful and grateful for every opportunity that you're going to get. I think that's important for for young young kids hearing this right now is to make sure you do thank your parents because they're the ones that are driving you to the rinks at you know maybe six in the morning or late at night or that's what their weekends consist of right like how many weekends were you in a car with your parents or your brothers and you're you're spending hotel nights in the hotel and those were your weekend vacations right yeah exactly and like my like my dad worked a lot when I was younger so my mom was a part us around so much it's three of my brothers and I and like it's but like I'm because I'm thankful for her, I'm so grateful for every opportunity that I've had. And like the opportunities that you have take full advantage of them because like you can't, and you know, the best thing was like, we didn't have phones back then. So like, I wasn't on my phone. I was literally like talking all the time with my friends in the car. Like, (laughs) I'm like, now everyone's on their phones. And I know that sounds so cliche, but like, I'm on my phone now. Like I'm on the bus. I'll be on my phone. Like I'm not, you know, like chatting it up in the back or playing cards. Like I used to like, yep. You know, like those were the road trips, like bus road trips when we were younger. Like those were so fun. Like in high school. What did school, we do like, before I phones? I, I know. It's like we must have been, I don't know what we were doing. Well, we I, had like iPods and stuff. Like, or true. stuff. You listen to music, basically. It's probably what you did if you didn't yeah. want to like talk with people. But yeah. <laughs> she wanted to isolate yourself from the bus. Just yeah. your buds. And I don't want to talk to anybody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's it. That's all. No, but it's it's true. And, and I think you bring up a good point. And you know, it's when you're a kid, you don't really understand. And that's okay. If you got to go through those life experiences to really truly appreciate what your parents are doing, your friends are doing for you. Um, but uh, you, you nailed it on the head. Dex, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your wisdom, your knowledge with us. You're an inspiration to so many, including myself. Um, so thank you for being who you are. Don't change, continue to grow and, and evolve and, and uh, you know, inspiring the next generation of, of hockey players. Thanks, Hawk. I uh, appreciate you having me on. Um, always pleasure talking with you, obviously. Um, and good luck with the future podcast as well. Thank you. I think people are going to either be running away or coming back for more. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they might just fast forward through the one part. Uh, that's about it. <laughs> yeah, we kind of got off on a tangent there, but it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. Hey, this is it. It's raw. It's, it's unfiltered. This is who we are. So I appreciate it. Everyone else, thank you so much for listening. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy. And keep chasing your dreams.